What's up guys? I finished putting together the frame and the wiring and the pneumatics for the Lumen PNP. Uh, so I would just want to run through some, some tips and tricks and issues that I had with the assembly so that when you're putting yours together, you know, maybe you won't run into these same problems. And you know, if the devs for uh, the Lumen PNP, Steven, if you're watching this, um, you know, take some notes down. Uh, it'd be great to update some of the documentation just so that when other people are putting theirs together, it's a little bit easier for them as well. So without further ado, let's run into some tips and tricks. So I have a pretty good amount of experience assembling machines. I've built a few different 3D printers, uh, a couple CNC's, and uh, I've made some pretty big changes to my K40 laser uh, cutter. So going into this, I felt like I had a pretty good amount of experience and I should be able to, you know, put this together no problem. Um, the six hour time build time that they listed on the website, uh, it took me a little bit longer than that. I was closer to like 10 hours and I still haven't put together the electronics part yet. So uh, might be even a little, little longer than that. One of the things that I did that might not be standard is I used a 0.8 millimeter nozzle on my 3D printer to print out all of the parts for the Lumen PNP. Um, most people have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle in their printer, but I wanted to get these parts out fast because uh, you know I was excited to play with it. So um, because of that, there was, I ran into a few different issues. Uh, some of the hole tolerances uh, were a little bit tight. Um, I, if I had, I, if I was to do this again, I would definitely use like a, a drill bit to just uh, clear out those holes. Uh, or, you know, if the 3D parts could just have a little bit more tolerance in the parts, then it would account for that. Uh, that way the bolts would just slide right through. Uh, another issue was because it was a, a larger nozzle, uh, I couldn't see the part numbers. It was just the detail um, was not high enough to be able to see the part number in the side of the print. So I also printed all these parts without support, uh, which there's definitely some spots where there is some overhang and there's some drooping plastic. Uh, and so one of the, the big issues that I had to do was I had to cut back some of that drooping plastic uh, for the aluminum extrusion uh, to be able to fit uh, into the parts. So that's another thing. Um, I wish the holes in the 3D files were, were chamfered. Um, so like, that way it makes it easier when you, when you try and stick a bolt into the hole uh, and screw it in, um, you know, it, it has a, an easier time finding its way to the center uh, of the hole. Uh, a few of the walls didn't print. They were just too thin, uh, specifically on the X gantry. Uh, the sides is just a very thin wall that would hold like a nut in place. Uh, and so that didn't print with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle, but, uh, it was fine. I, I just put a small piece of tape to hold the nut in place. Um, and then eventually, you know, the screw came up and, and was able to grab it. So it was okay. Uh, another issue that I had was, uh, feeding the belts, uh, through the gantry, uh, the three printed gantry parts. Um, I don't understand how, how you could do this. Um, it like, Here's, here's a small piece of the belt and it wants to, to bend down where it has all these um, ribs and you need it to bend up. Uh, and so what I ended up doing was I cut a small piece of metal, just a thin sliver of metal and, and bent it into a curve. And I stuck that down into the hole uh, on the gantry. And then uh, I fed the, the belt uh, into the the slot and the aluminum rail, and then it would just, I just pushed it up uh, and then it went up through the hole in the gantry. So that's a little pro tip right there. I wish it listed, I wish in the instructions they listed out the, the lengths of the belts. So, you know, they, they just tell you to like feed the belt through, but you have this giant, it, you know, it's, it's one giant roll of a GT2 belt. And so it's it's kind of cumbersome to deal with this big roll of belt while you're trying to like feed the other end through. Uh, you know, if it just listed, you know, you need you need the belt to be this long in in the docks and and give like a little bit of a extra length to it. Um, that would have been fine. Um, and then it would just been a lot easier to handle the the belt. 
one big issue that I ran into was the X gantry assembly is wrong. Um, more so just it, how, how you go about assembling it. Um, what I found was it, like, I couldn't put the, the bottom rollers on the X gantry, um, after I had like tightened down the top rollers. So I, what I would recommend is actually keeping the, the gantry as two separate halves and then sandwich, you know, all of the rollers together, uh, when you're ready to do that. Um, Uh, another thing that I would do is wait to screw the nozzle. So the nozzle or the, the suction of the parts, I would wait to, to screw that on until the very end. Um, there's no reason to do it while you're assembling the gantry. And it just gets in the way of, um, you know, screwing and tightening in some of the bolts. So just wait until the end to do that. Uh, one big issue that I ran into right at the beginning was I didn't know what was the front of the machine, what was the back of the machine. I didn't know what was left, what was right. Um, it was just kind of confusing to know which part was which. Um, so it would be amazing if, if the 3D printed parts were labeled, you know, with a big like left or back or front. Um, that way you would know what it is. I, like I said, like I, I couldn't see the part numbers that were printed on it because I was using a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Um, so I, I didn't really know what I was doing. And like, there weren't a lot of uh, pictures that really oriented, you know, what you were putting together. <clears throat> uh, in the documentation, it's missing the X limit switch, like mounting it. Um, it's not a big deal. It's the same process as mounting, you know, the other limit switches. So just follow the instructions for that and you're good. Uh, the number of axis idlers listed in the in the table uh, is wrong. Um, there should be three of them. It just says to print one of them. Um, I wish that so there's like a markdown like a, a markdown document um, that you can use to like view uh, the, all the parts. But I really just wish there was a table of all the parts with photos and links to like each 3D printed file. Um, it would just be a lot easier to figure out, you know, what you need. Um, and then also like naming the files of the 3d printed parts with like the number that you need of that part, uh, would just be a lot easier. Um, and also, um, on that same vein, um, I didn't realize until afterwards that the, um, <laughs> the, the camera, uh, or the, the ring light, uh, diffuser 3d printed parts, um, needed to be printed in white or natural filament. Um, I was just printing, you know, here's the list of files, just print them. So I was printing them all in black. And so when I got to that part, I was like, Oh, nope, that needs to be white. So I just had to reprint it, that, reprint that not a big deal, but it would just be a nice thing. Um, the order of operations. So a lot of the times in the instructions, they would say, do this. And then later the, they would say, Oh, but first do this. So there's a lot of like backtracking and um, I wish it was just more like, you know, do this, then that, then that, then that, then that, instead of, you know, back and forth. Uh, pictures. So I really wish in the documentation that the pictures were a little bit more zoomed out. It was hard to know like the context of where uh, the part that you were assembling was in, in the, the, bigger, the bigger picture. Uh, so sometimes you're, you're just lost because you're just too zoomed in. Um, another thing that I wish it said was you do not want to use small hex wrenches like this. You definitely, everything seems to be designed for a longer wrench like this, specifically if you have one with a ball at the end. So you can do, um, so you can screw in some of the, the, the bolts um, at an angle. Um, I found using one of these small wrenches was just a real, real pain. You had to lift it out and, and redo it is just get, get a longer set of wrenches. Tubing. Uh, don't trust the lengths listed, uh, in the doc, in the documentation. Um, so when, when you're mounting all the parts, uh, you know, they have pictures saying like, this is where you mount it. So I, I counted the number of holes and I mounted 
you know, the the vacuum pump and the the valve um, exactly where they had in the picture. Uh, but then when I cut the tubing to the size that it said, uh, it it wasn't the right length. So what I would recommend is actually just plugging one end of the tube in one of the you know one of the valves and then eyeballing the length for the rest and then cutting it to length. Um, that way you make sure you have the perfect length. Um, let's see here. I wish uh, I wish in the instructions that they batched more of the tasks for assembling the frame. Um, there's a lot of instances where like you're doing the same tasks over and over again, but it's like broken up into like different sections. And if you batch them all at once, then you kind of get in a groove of like, okay, this is what I need to do. You know, just do this three times. Great. Um, versus, you know, switching from one task to another. Uh, the metal plate. So the metal like assembly plate where the cam the bottom camera and a bunch of other hardware is mounted to, um, they don't tell you the distance of where it needs to be mounted up front. Uh, and then they tell you to like remount it later. And I just wish they told you up front uh, that way you don't have to do it twice. Um, the lens of the cameras. Uh, so they're, I think they're like glued or something in place. Uh, and you have to kind of like break that, that, that glue connection so that you can adjust the focus of them. And uh, one of the issues that I had was just like, it was just so hard to turn one of these lenses. Um, you have to remember there's a little like set screw on the side. So remember to loosen that first, but then um, I would like, so I, I actually like marred up the outside metal uh, of the lens. It, it's not going to affect the, the performance of it, but like it's all scratched up now. So um, I guess when you're doing it, you know, make sure to put something, um, you know, between your pair of pliers and, you know, the lens itself, maybe some electrical tape. I don't know, something. Uh, let's see here, cable management. So I had some issues with the braided cable. Uh, so they give you this stuff and you like press on it and it like expands and, and you run the cables through. Um, that was fine for the, um, it was the x-axis umbilical. Uh, there's just two cables going through there, but the, um, the X gantry like has like six cables going through it and it's just not enough space. Uh, in this this braided cable to fit through it, and I ended up getting like uh, frayed like crazy. And so what I ended up using was I used some of this uh, spiral plastic cable management stuff, um, and you, you just twist it around the cable and you wrap it um, around all the wires, uh, and that worked pretty well. Uh, it took a little while to wrap everything, but um, it held all the cable cables together. Um, what else did we had? We had a lot of, um, brittle zip ties, uh, that would just break on me. Um, like the little tab that holds the zip tie together, just like snapped off on three or four of them. And then, uh, since I was having some issues with the cable management, I went through, um, a few more zip ties than I probably normally would have. Uh, so it would have been nice to have more zip ties to pull from, um, there was also, I felt that there was a lot of unnecessary hardware, uh, you know, in the, in the 3D printed, um, you know, parts, you could have just used like threading directly into the part itself, um, rather than like embedding nuts everywhere. And that would have, uh, omitted hardware, which costs money, uh, as well as, you know, it simplified the assembly because now you don't have to embed this nut and then screw into it. You're just screwing into the 3d printed part. Um, and so like for some of the things, especially like the, the camera assemblies that are, aren't having any like force exerted on them. Um, those could definitely be simplified, uh, to not have any nuts in them. Uh, let's see here. And, and there are also instances where there's just like, like four or like five nuts when like you could have gotten away with like three or two. Um, so I, I would have simplified things that way. Uh, I also wish that there were fewer, uh, screw sizes. So there's like tons and tons of different screw sizes. There's like, uh, there's like a, uh, M3, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, uh, like a 25 millimeter, 30 millimeter. Um, you know, I, I wish that there were just 
fewer numbers of lengths, it would have made it easier uh, to assemble because now you're not searching through as many different bags of things. I, I did appreciate the labeling on the bags though. That was fantastic. Um, but just like simplifying the, the number of different types of parts would make it easier to assemble and it would make it easier to uh, source and you know put all these kits together. Um, a few of the M3 nuts that I had, the threads weren't quite right on them and I didn't realize it at first. And I, I was just having a really hard time, you know, trying to get the, the screw to go through the embedded M3 nut, but like it wasn't going through. And so I was like, oh, maybe it's not lined up, but um, you know, I, I took it out and I forced an M3 screw through it and that cleaned up the threads. But um, just an FYI, some of the parts were uh, some of the, the M3 nuts um, had some issues with the threads. Uh, another issue that I had was the X axis linear rails just needed a lot of torque uh, to tighten down the, the motor mounts. Um, maybe it's just, I, I don't know if there was a problem with the, the threading on the, um, the rails uh, or, you know, the, the screw may have been a little longer than it needed to be. Uh, but that was an issue that I ran into. Um, I think one big thing that, uh, I wish I had done was just done a better job of like staying organized throughout the process. I, I had everything kind of sprawled out on the floor. Uh, so I had a big workspace. Um, but I wish I had, I dumped out the M5, uh, 10 millimeter, uh, screws and the M5 nuts into just like little containers to just pull from because you're, you're using those left and right all over the machine. So, you know, having just quick access to those is great. Uh, another thing that um, is just a handy tip is like, sometimes it's easier to just like pre-screw the slotted nuts uh, onto the screw itself and then drop the whole thing, the whole part into place and then tighten down the screws. Um, it's it's kind of tricky sometimes like to, to drop the nut into place and then like, either you know tilt the whole frame left and right to try and slide the nut into place or or, or tap it into place with a tool uh, and then try and line up the screw and oh it didn't quite get the thread so now it's like screwing into the side of the nut and um so it just pre-screwing um you know some of some of the bolts and, and nuts would be good another thing that was kind of weird was uh with the heat shrink tubing it's like really really thick heat shrink tubing i've never used heat shrink tubing this thick before um most of the stuff that i've dealt with was pretty thin uh and i, I had a hard time getting a lighter to like shrink it uh but a heat gun worked really well so that's just my experience from it um yeah i mean overall i i really think that this is a solid machine um and I think that, you know, with some of these changes, and I hope uh, the, the dev team listens to this and updates some of the documentation, I think that, you know, you could get closer to the uh, the quoted six hours of, uh, of build time, um, you know, if things were just a little bit simpler. Uh, I found myself having to undo a lot of work and redo it. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that the documentation uh, just gets updated uh, so it's a lot cleaner uh, and easier to, to understand but I'm pretty excited about having the machine. It's on the floor right now. Um, I'm gonna work the rest of the today trying to get the electronics up and running and get the, the thing moving around, but I'm pretty excited that I have a pick and place machine. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, comment down below if you have any questions about the Lumen PNP uh, and the assembly process. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Subscribe for more, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.